Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at Utopia Engine, a solitaire print-and-play game by Nick Hayes and released by Nevermore Games. In the game you play an artificer who is attempting to reconstruct the Utopia Engine within the next 15 days or so in hopes of averting the end of the world. The game requires the rules, the adventure sheets, or the printer-friendly single sheet, two six-sided dice, and a pencil with an eraser. The adventure sheets are broken into a few different sections. The wilderness, which is broken into different regions, each region has a construct and a component available as well as search fields. The wilderness also houses the event cycle. The store is where you hold components found in the wilderness. The tool belt, where special abilities are held until used. The hit point vial, where hits are recorded. If your hit point track ever reaches 6, you fall unconscious and wake in your workshop where you spend 6 days recovering. You may also at any time spend a day in your workshop to recover a hit point. The time track, which, well, tracks the days past. The boxes with ease trigger events. If the time track makes it to a day with a skull next to it, the world ends. Also in the time track is the God's Hand, which is kind of a utopia engine light. You can spend three energy from the God's Hand to delay Doomsday one day. And the workshop where constructs are activated and combined. The game has no turns, instead there are days that get checked off the time track either when searching, resting, or when activating a construct fails. To play the game, decide where you are going to search and start searching. To search, you pick a region and a search box within that region. First cross off a bubble on the region's day tracker. If the bubble has a minus one, also cross a day off from the time track. If in crossing off a day on the time track you cross off one with an E in it, there is an event. Roll a single die four times, recording the results in the four events. Then the regions numbered thusly are affected by those events. You then roll your two dice and assign their values to any of the boxes of the six available. Roll twice more, assigning the dice values each time. When the search box is full, subtract the bottom three digit number from the top three digit number, then consult the search results table to find out what your result is. A result of zero finds an activated construct and adds five energy to the god's hand. One through ten finds a construct. Eleven through ninety-nine finds a component per the region you are in. Anything above one hundred or below zero finds an encounter. No matter the result, record it and continue. If an encounter is found, consult the encounter chart and combat table per the region and the result. For combat, look at the encounter chart to see which level monster you will face. Then look in the box pertaining to the region you are in. Then roll your two dice and look at the chart. The number on the left is the number on which the monster will hit you. The number on the right is which numbers will kill it. If you are hit, take a hit to your hit point vial. If the monster is killed, the encounter is over and you make a component check. Roll one die. If the result is equal to or less than the encounter level you just faced, the check is successful and you get to add the component to your stores per the region you are in. Level 5 encounters find more powerful items called legendary treasures. Instead of the regular components, the legendary treasures are items which will help you complete your task. If ever all six search fields at a location are used, the construct is found at the cost of an additional day. Also, if for some reason you ever want to go back to a previously searched region, either to get components or what have you, erase all the progress on the region's day tracker and start it over. Once a construct is found, it can be activated. To activate the construct, go to the workshop and consult the activation field. Each field has two opportunities of four columns. As with searching, roll the dice and record the results where you wish. Do this three more times. This time you will subtract each column separately. A result of five gets two energy points, a result of four gets one energy point. A result of zero is able to be erased and re-rolled. Any positive result other than 4 or 5 causes a lock and is X'd out and gets no energy points. Any negative result causes the construct to backfire, causing you 1 damage as well as locking out that column. Next, transfer the energy points to the activation column. If all 4 activation bubbles are filled, the construct is activated. If the construct isn't activated after completing the top field, spend a day on the time track and try again on the bottom field. If activation fails again, cross out one more day and activate the construct. Any surplus energy points from activation get transferred to the God's Hand. You may spend three energy points from the God's Hand to cross out a skull on the time track, giving the world one more day. Once a construct is activated, it offers a special power usable once per game. 
When you have at least two activated constructs that are connected by a gray line, you can then link those constructs together. To link the constructs, you need to have at least one of the required component, then that component is removed from your stores. You get three rolls of the dice. This time you are trying to create the lowest result in each column. A negative result creates an arc that deals you one damage and destroys an additional link component, then acts as a two. Add the three results into the link box. In each link, you are trying to get the lowest number possible. When linking constructs, any unwanted numbers can be put into the wastebasket. When the wastebasket is full, it can no longer be used unless there is a surplus number rolled due to previous wasted numbers. After all the constructs are activated and linked, add the numbers in the link boxes and put them into the final activation difficulty box. If you feel the difficulty is too high, you can spend hit points up to and including your last one to lower at one point of difficulty per hit point spent. You may also consider resting before doing this if you have days to spare, as once final activation is started, it cannot be stopped until you are successful or dead. When you are ready to begin final activation, roll your two dice and add the numbers together. If your roll is lower than the difficulty, the activation fails. You lose a day from the time track and a hit point. If you are still alive, you must try again. If the result is equal to or greater than the difficulty, the Utopia engine bursts into life, saving the world and you have won. If the time track ever reaches a day next to a skull, the world has ended and you lose. Also, if you die, you lose. You can die by taking two damage when you only have one empty space in your hit point vial. Either way, you can tally your score and compare it to previous games competing with yourself for a high score. And that's Utopia Engine. It's one of the few solo games that I really enjoy playing. The rulebook and adventure sheets are very evocative of the theme, and while I don't necessarily feel like I'm saving the world, the game offers a nice dice mechanism and I do feel tension as to where I assign my rolls. It plays quickly but offers nice decisions and is more fun and interesting than rolling two dice should be. It's pretty tough to win as you have to be nearly perfect during activation, but there is still a gratification in the failure. While I've never saved the world, I still like attempting it from time to time. It will make a nice addition to any solo library. It's unlike anything else I've ever played.